Hey, it's Anfa from anfamusic.com and today I want to show you how to make water sounds in Zenith of FX. So here we go. I have my keyboard hooked. Now, water is very funny to uh, synthesize because, well, for a long time I thought there's like no way to make the sound of water, like stream, droplets, this kind of stuff. Like, it's so complicated. But actually, it's very simple. You just get something that is more or less noise. So the, we're going to use AdSynth now. And then you turn on a bandpass filter, turn up the resonance to maximum, and turn it down the volume. You can also use this post gain or I don't know, maybe pre gain filter. Oh, filter output uh, gain to uh, like compensate for the loudness that the resonance is going to give us. Now I control the filter frequency with the velocity of my key. When I hit harder, I get higher. But I don't want that, so I'm disabling the velocity sensing amount, like setting it to zero, so that has no effect. If I set it to medium, if I set it to max, yeah, my keyboard will even like fell off the stand. <laughs> I had to hit it though so hard. All right, but like this is kind of narrow, but still not narrow enough. We need more resonance. So I'm gonna um, switch the number of stages from one to five, which is kind of working like we had five of these fielders stacked. But this, on the other hand, makes it much, much wider. Something I'm going to go with the stage of two. And now, what I'm going to do is enable LFO. So I'm just rising the depth because it's like it's on, it's on. Mm, I wonder if we can see the whole spectrum. Now you can see just a part of it. So now you can see more of it. And you can see our beautiful um, filter sweeps. But what will happen if we make them faster? This is the maximum and you can actually hear that the LFO is aliasing. sounds pretty nice. Also, uh, there's a thing you might and didn't know. Right now, you can tune these in real time. Which also means that you can um, automate all this stuff using CC. I haven't really tried this, doing that in Ardor, and I'm probably going to do a video about that once I check that out and can teach you. I'm sure how it works. But I've seen that there are tools, so it, it's probably possible to automate this stuff in our door. All right, but this sounds nothing like water. So let's crank up the randomness. The amplitude randomness. And the frequency randomness. If we slow it down, you might be able to... Oh, no, it's slowed down, not this. Like, this is alone amplitude randomness. You can see that the, the tops and downs of the LFO are changing. And now I'm going to disable amplitude randomness and enable frequency randomness. And this looks to have very little effect for reasons unknown. 
like very little like one of few one out of few sweeps is altered this is a little bit weird I think I'm gonna report this as a bug because I think it should work a little bit different all right so now let's change our source sound to something less um, less uniform. Now we're using a sine wave. It's probably going to make the sound only when our filter is exactly in the frequency of our oscillator. And you can see that we just tuned into the into the um, octave. However, we want something else. So I'm going to change this to a saw wave oscillator. Now we're going to get a much more wideband signal. I'm going to disable the filter for now using this bypass global filter switch here, which makes this bypassed for this voice. And every voice has its own switch. So I can hear this is much too high for what I want to do. Because I want more or less random um, impulses. And I want the filter to filter these impulses to create blips uh, like the droplets of water would do. And each blip I want to be at a different frequency. So we get different droplets of different sizes and a lot of them. So what I'm going to do is probably change this maybe to voice free. And I'm going to change this oscillator back to sign and turn it down. I'm going to leave it on. Now we have oscillator 1, 2, which I'm going to enable also and turn it down and free. And the oscillator free is sounding. What I want to do is take advantage of the fact that we can modulate uh, oscillators with different oscillators. If you want to learn more about this, like check out my first video, UV01, which is called Zenet Sub Effects Modulation Madness. And I'm explaining this in detail. Now we're modulating uh, this uh, saw wave with the internal modulator's sine wave oscillator. If we turn it down, it makes kind of interesting noises. But I want to make this much more interesting, and we don't have much control here. So I'm going to use the external modulator of the voice 2. So now the voice 2, which is this one, is used for modulation. And because it's a sine wave, it's a very simple modulation. But the level of the modulation was so high that we got actually noise. And this might be what you want. It might not be. Funny fact is that we have an additional LFO, uh, sorry, envelope for the power. So when well, using external modulators, you can have one envelope there and another envelope here, because this one also have, is affected. Like it is having an effect. Aliasing. I guess it's aliasing. Well, that creates some weird ass noises, but nothing like the water. So I'm going to use a bandpass filter here also. And we can take a sneak peek, disable the oscillator free, and listen to oscillator 2. This is very quiet because there's nothing there, because we have only a sine wave. So I'm going to change the oscillator type to maybe abs ABS stretch sine. I don't know what is the ABS. It's I guess it's some kind of a mathematical function. Oh, and also we can't hear much because voice 2 isn't bypassed with this. The global filter doesn't have effect on voices that aren't uh, directly heard. So when we turn this down, 
the, the global filter doesn't affect how this oscillator, like this voice 2, modulates voice 3. So, like, don't care. Like, you don't have to disable this for every voice that is using, that is used for modulating. modulating. Okay. So this is our oscillator. Now let's give it some frequency LFO. Make it random. I'm gonna make this even worse using the voice one. And the voice one is gonna be our wonderful sine wave which is itself going to be using pitch LFO. However, I'm going to dis, uh, decrease the am amount of modulation applied to oscillator 2, to voice 2. Let's make this random too. And now we want to sweep this. Enabling LFO. Make it more random. Maybe change the stages to two. Make it a little bit sharper. Increase the quality. I don't want this to be too sine wavy because I want more random noise-like modulation. Pretty nice. Okay, let's make it silent. And now enable it. Us, uh, the voice free. I'm going to disable the amplitude envelope. And give our basic oscillator also a pitch LFO. Oops. I click the P, which is paste, but I have nothing to paste here, so I'm closing it. I want to find the amount of modulation that is just right. I think this waveform is a bit too sharp and it creates very uh, nasty artifacts, so I'm going to a little bit tamper this saw wave, distort it a little bit with a limit wave shaping function, and use a little bit Lopus. Well, maybe Lopus 1, because I want it a little bit rounder, more gentle, like this. So we have some uh, harmonic content, but not too much, and it's not very sharp. Yeah, still we're getting huge amounts of screaming modulation, which is, isn't is particularly what I want right now. Fun fact is, we can alter the amount of modulation over time using an LFO. Setting the depth to 64, we are making the modulation go from full to close to zero. It's not perfect, but it's close. And you can see the effect. Of course, I want to make this more random. Maybe change it to a square function, so we have so like a stair step. We also have here amplitude envelope, which isn't really good because we want a consistent sound right now. Yeah, we can also do the same for this, making our modulation even more ever so changing. And maybe a triangle wave here. Sounds like crap. Perfect. 
I'm gonna enable the unison. So we have a little bit stereo. And now I'm gonna disable the bi bypass global filter. This is a sound that somebody called digital water or electronic water. The problem with this sound is that we have very sharp changes. Oh, sorry. Whoa. Wow. That's getting very nasty, right? Like, insane. And this doesn't sound very controllable. Which is, which is weird, because I have a... Post gain very low. It's like we have a very, very big uh, amplitude envelope attack, very long, that is making something much, much louder over time, and it's not there. I can't see anything. Now it behaves like expected. So you can hear it has this quasi, um, quasi water um, quality to it, but well, it doesn't sound particularly particularly uh, realistic. And uh, what I'm gonna do is try playing a chord with this. So I'm switching the panning to all the way left, which is going to make it random for each note. So you can even see the color, like more violet is right and more green is left, I guess. Mm, if I also make this LFO start at random and make it a little bit quieter, I guess that um, maybe enabling some frequency tracking for the filter pitch, filter cutoff frequency, will enable us to vary our performance of the water by playing different pitches, which is going to play different size of the droplets. Small droplets, bigger droplets. This sounds much more like real water, huh? Looks like we have to limit our scale to make it reasonable for what we're trying to do. Because, like, the droplets are not getting larger than a sim certain amount. So I guess if we just turn our filter up, or our keyboard, or also up one octave. It's gonna help us get more convincing sound. What I'm gonna do now is um, play around with the envelopes to um, make it like the streams are coming in and coming out, so we have m get more fading between the different streams. So I'm gonna use the simple amplitude envelope to get more attack and more release. Well, the release is too much. I'm gonna kill this note with a, the panic button. 
Okay, I'm hitting the note. Pretty damn long. I want this shorter. All right. Kind of interesting. Um, we can also like change the side of the droplets with time. So we can like make every stream yeah, let's convert to free data, remote data. We can make every stream start off with smaller drop droplets as it's quieter, uh, stop at in the middle, and then as it fades away, make the droplets small, smaller again. It's kind of realistic. Now it's a little bit hard to um, believe in this sound because it doesn't define any space. So what I'm going to try to do is use a reverb to make it more reverb and maybe a subtle echo, which is a delay. but I don't want it to actually do echo. I want it to do reverb style stuff. So I'm gonna turn this delay very, very down, way down low. I'm gonna turn up damping, make it even lower. Yeah, this is what I wanted to do. Very metallic reverb, kind of early reflection reverb style. Actually, our notes are very quiet. I could turn them up a little bit. Maybe change the delay between the left and right to make it a little bit more stereophonic. And we can copy this and paste it on the second slot. Hello. I'm gonna switch back and forth. Okay, it's now now it's here. And change the delay to the other half. Maybe increase it a bit. And now let's resort to reverb. You can see the reverb on the spectrum. Mostly because it has a different stereo panning, because oh, it so happens that our random panning gave us a very leftish note. So everything that the dry signal is get, giving is green, and everything that the reverb is giving is kind of teal because it's mixed between the violet and green. Which is pretty cool. This reverb isn't the best, but it already makes a huge difference. Can I make it a little bit more subtle? Maybe bypass the highs a bit. Increase the dampening a little bit. And maybe I will increase the attack time a bit. Also here. <laughs> One more trick we can do is also enable the controllers and play with the uh, pitch wheel. I don't know if it's gonna have any effect because it's um, like, Normally, it changes the pitch of the oscillators, but we're using only filter to generate our pitches here, which are also non-musical. So yeah, I guess the pitch wheel doesn't do anything now.
when I was rehearsing for this video, I killed my CPU with too much notes, so I'm a little bit curious to... Curious. Cautious. Not to do this again. Let's see what happens if we go to extreme notes. Very low. It's funny how our envelopes released up and made all the water droplets go very, very small and very strangely um, high for so small. For so small. Let's now go very high, see what happens. More notes. Yeah, this more sounds like computers in a sci-fi movie from the 90s. <laughs> Sorry, 70s. We can easily see that there are major issues with aliasing that produces noise. Or we have some other. Maybe we can fix this um, bleed by increasing the volume of this uh, voice, because uh, these voices are still producing sound, even so, even though they are at zero, and this is going to be fixed. But because it is not fixed now, I'm going to use a high pass filter here, and use its post gain to make this voice louder. And of course, I need to compensate here at the global settings to not deafen us. And let's see if we can, if we still get this, this bleed, crosstalk. Not so. Yeah, so it wasn't so much the aliasing as it was the crosstalk from the previous two voices. But you can work this around, just, you know, increasing the loudness of the voice you need and decreasing the whole adsyn global. All right, I think this is it. We're only already 28 minutes in, so I'm not going to I'm not going to go any deeper. Uh, the Zen Sub FX patch will be available for download in the description. So if you want to play with it, dissect, dissect it, and just uh, inspect, do something with it, you can get it. If you want to ask me anything, if you want me to make a video about something particular, uh, if you have any questions. Uh, Leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye.